There's a new upcoming trend in the industry, and it's taking off with greater speed than anticipated. Reflective screens. Things like RLCD and TLCD, reflective and transflective, respectively, have slowly been leaned towards as a viable option as an alternative to electronic paper. Companies like Daylight, Ezai, Hansbury, TCL, etc., all have claims that they can give you an e-paper-esque visual at none of the drawbacks. So today we're going to look at three technologies side-by-side, by-side, e-paper, traditional screens, and reflective. So these are the three in question today. Now we're just going to keep it super simple. This is e-ink. This is reflective. LCD. And this is LCD, LED, TFT. It's representing the ones that we all know, the computer screens of the world, the tablets, the smartphones, etc. So this is going to be essentially the same as your TV. Things are going to be smooth. This is going to be e-paper and this is the middle ground. So you can kind of see these are all three of them in their off state. There's nothing on top of either of these. All of these units are completely bare. There's no screen protectors, nothing. You'll see that in their off state, an e-paper device will always be on. This is off right now. But once an image is produced on e-paper, it will never go away forever. Unless there's something in the software that says if you reach 10% battery, display something else or whatever, but it'll never go away. That's it. This is, we'll just call it LCD for the rest of this video. You'll see it's very shiny. It's very reflective. Let's see if I can get myself there. Hello, everybody. And when you turn it on, it looks like a TV, basically. It's very fast, it's very smooth, it's very colorful. Now you'll notice this one bridges the gap. Look at it, it looks like it's all silver. It's not as mirror as that, but it's not as white or white as that. This one is reflective LCD, and you'll see that it can't catch me in it. But when you turn it on, you'll see you are now faced with a traditional Android experience. Now, this is weird because at this angle, you can't see anything. Look at it, it's gone. But at this angle, you can see it clear as day. And we'll change up the angles in a little bit and show you each one of these. So the benefit of this is that if you're in a lit room, it uses significantly less battery because as you do things like drop the top down, go over here, going to the settings menu, etc. It's gonna look great when it can and bad when it can't like that. Whereas something like an e-paper device is going to be good no matter what angle you look at it. If you look at it at this extreme angle, this extreme angle, top down, it's not going to change. You see it is, it is not influenced by any of the light whatsoever. And you can turn on the glow light because it has a glow light so you can read it in the dark it really does have a ton of benefits and don't worry this has a lot of benefits too when it comes to videos and stuff which we'll show you in a second now this is the best one why is this the best one is because it's what we all kind of know it's very fast and quick and snappy and beautiful and colorful and fast this is the greatest one but it has the most damage to your eyes comparing to the other two and this one lasts the fewest hours because it is using a traditional LCD screen, LED screen, whatever, in that it's always flickering constantly, whether your eyes can catch it or not. And the backlight is powering the pixels so that you can see what is going on on it. But with that, you get a very unparalleled high quality experience. But there's a drawback in that it doesn't last very long and your eyes can get pretty strained on it. In fact, People grab the bridge of their nose because they read on tablets so long, which is why e-paper exists in the first place. So you can see the comparison of all three of these on the table. The LCD reflective is terrible at this particular angle. This is always going to be good, but it's going to be slow. And this is going to be both. It's going to be good at any angle and it's going to be fast but it's going to have the least amount of battery so what we're going to do now is show a little bit of video on all of these three unfortunately we can't do it on the kindle so we're going to bring another device in for it just to give you an idea of how e-paper handles fluid motion 
So we'll start with e-paper. Typically when you get an e-paper device like this, you're going to have to swipe the top down and find some sort of speed mode or display mode. If you have something in the best display mode and you try to play a video, this is what happens. It's terrible because these are little tiny ink particles bouncing up and down across a wide spread in order to attempt to make a video flow. And that just, that's not gonna work. So what you have to do is spread out those particles and put less demand on them by going into a speed mode. Once you do go into a speed mode, if the thing will cooperate, there you go, and I've paused it. Once you do go into a speed mode, you'll see that it's much more fluid. You understand what's happening on the screen. Yes, it's 17 frames a second. Yes, it doesn't have the refresh rate of an LCD, but that's not the point. The message is clear across what the video was trying to transmit. You understand that there's movement. You understand that there's a cell phone in the screen making the guy jump, etc., etc. The point is not lost. So when you have e-paper, that's the caveat is that that it basically looks bad and is slow. But remember, this is effectively paper. It is electronic ink that's jumping up and down based off of the type of charge that is applied to each little capsule filled with particles. So for it to work this well is nothing short of a miracle. Granted, most devices outside of Amazon, Kobo, and Remarkable can do this type of thing. This is a V-Woods, for example. But you just have to be careful that when you get an e-paper device, it's not going to be like what you have experienced on the next unit here. The next one being traditional LCD. There's never anything you're gonna have to do to this. You don't need speed modes, you don't need refinement, you don't need anything at all. This is your computer screen. This is your TV, this is your smartphone. This is what it's gonna look like, and that's it. It works, it looks good, it flows, it, there's no hiccups, there's no slowdowns, there's nothing. Because this is the traditional screen we all know ever since flat screens were invented, basically. But with this, as we said at the top of the hour, it does affect your eyes whether you notice it or not. This is affecting your eyes. Not only that, it's incredibly reflective. You can see here the studio lights. Look how much that eats away at the image. So there is that that you have to consider as well when you get into an LCD unit in is that other unit technologies like RLCD, like TLCD, like ePaper cut down on the reflectiveness. Yes, you can put a matte screen protector on top of this, but you can put a matte screen protector on top of anything. You still have the battery drain, you still have the eye interruptions and things like that. So this is going to be a LCD, but there's a new technology, the one we've been talking about, that tries to bridge the two worlds together with reflectivity. Our LCD is so good. Look how good. Oh, oh, it looks bad again. Oh, wait, no, it looks really good. Oh, oh, it looks terrible. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Sorry, I take it back. It looks great. Oh, I, I, I can't see it anymore. It's gone. So the viewing angle is terrible. It is just terrible. But look how cool that looks. And if you didn't notice, we've been pointing it over here in the studio lights the entire time. It almost doesn't even affect the image. In fact, it helps the image out. But you can see once you get rid of that reflectivity, it, the image disappears because it requires the ambient light to function. There is no backlight. It is utilizing ambient light going through a layer and reflecting back to your eyes. So you get the fluidity, you get the smoothness and everything, but you don't get a very good viewing angle. And honestly, you're going to have to hold it just right for you to be able to view it and consume the content properly. But you get an incredible battery life compared to traditional LED, and you get a lot of the eye-saving benefits of e-paper. So it truly does, not the best of both worlds, but it does tap into both worlds and give you an all-around experience. And Ezai takes it even further with TLCD. You can see at the end roll, we have some videos there where they take RLCD and they put a glow light layer. So there is a lot that the technology has to offer. Of course, our industry is e-paper, so we want to lean towards that. E-paper's on everything from e-readers to tablets to smartphones to watches to little design cubes. E-paper is everywhere. You probably don't even know it if you go into your local supermarket or electronic store and you see little price tags. Those are e-paper. LCD is everywhere, too. It's on TV, smartphones, it's on tablets, it's on computers, it's on laptops, it's on Chromebooks, it's on 
every single thing is an LCD screen, basically. Reflective LCD is on the rise. It really, really is. And if you wanted to know what the differences are between all these technologies, here it is. This should have answered a lot of the questions. If it doesn't, there's stuff on the video cards, there's stuff in the description, and there's stuff on the end roll. And of course, you can scan our channel and see all of the amazing things that we cover on a day-to-day basis. Thank you guys for watching this try comparison of the three different technologies. Have a good day.